welcome back to our channel and thank you for tuning in and thank you for supporting us but if you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed yet please encourage us by doing so so that we can bring you the latest news as they come and together we can support our leader Mazen and the Kano, IPOB and Eastern Security Network to make our Biafran dream and restoration a reality. He say Buhari Impostor and the Fulani Nigerian government are not happy with P2B after he exposed their fuel subsidy scam and fraud. And this made the House of Representatives to summon Buhari and his appointees to answer questions how they stole money through subsidy. Malame and the Fulani Caliphates are planning to arrest P2B with Trump up charges. Tunobu runs to France for medical tourism. This is the reason why Nigeria has to disintegrate because it has nothing to offer to Biafrans. It has nothing. You know, the Fulani Nigerian government and fuel subsidy scammers are on the run after P2B exposed Fulani Nigerian government's monumental fuel subsidy scam and fraud being committed by Buhari Impostor himself because he's the Minister of Petroleum. Instead of NMPC to remit revenues into Federation account, that is Nigerian Federation account, they are remitting revenue into Buhari Impostors account. Just as Lagos State Government is remitting 1 billion naira every month into Tinubu's account. That's what they remit. You know, Buhari Impostor thinks he's smart. So he's laundering all the stolen money through his frequent travel Esther code. You know, the criminal Fulani terrorist jihadists that Tunubu and co-travelers installed as Nigerian president in 2015, Buhari, has stolen Nigerian dry and impoverished Nigerians through his fuel subsidy scam and huge retirement packages. You know, prior to 2015, they claimed that there was nothing like fuel subsidy. They claimed. That was what Buhari Imposter and his uh, gang of criminals claimed. That there was no fuel subsidy. That fuel subsidy is a scam. And they came into power. And they continued with this fuel subsidy and quadruple the amount the government before them, that is good luck Jonathan's government, the amount they pay for subsidy, they quadruple it. They were paying four times that amount. And they renamed it in order to deceive Nigerians until investigative journalists Exposed them and they could not deny it. That was the only thing they could not deny. According to reports, the Labour Party presidential candidate, P2B, said petrol subsidy is not beneficial to Nigeria's economy, describing it as a scam. You know, it's the full and ginger weed that are benefiting from this petrol subsidy. 
because they are the one pocketing the money. The cable had reported that petrol subsidy payment gulped 1.27 trillion naira in the last five months. About 31% of the 4 trillion naira provision for this year. It eroded oil gains as Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, failed to remit revenue to the Federation account. Nigeria has spent over $40 billion on subsidy. Her total education expenditure in the last 10 years is about 8 trillion naira, which is equivalent to $20 billion. This is 50% of it, according to P2B. P2B said that if Nigeria spent $20 billion on power generation, Nigeria would have been generating and distributing 20,000 megawatts of electricity today. It means subsidy alone would have solved a lot of issues in Nigerian education, health, and power sectors. If Nigeria had or have 20,000 megawatts of electricity capacity, Nigeria will be growing at more than 4% and add over $100 billion to its GDP. Within the same period, Nigeria has borrowed $90 billion, which Nigeria is servicing. With this, you could say that total mismanagement of resources that could have changed the entire northern Nigeria that vast land would have been a huge farmland contributing their quota to the Federation account instead of being a parasite. You know, the Nigerian news media trying to put Pitobi on the corner, they were asking him, if he was ready to remove subsidy, they wanted to hold in on something. And he told them, it's two ways. If he's removing it, he will remove it, but he will have to offer Nigerians what will be equivalent to what they are removing. That was the best answer I gave to them. But the problem is that the Nigerian political elite, led by the Fulani Janjaweed and all the ethnic champions, they hate Ndibo. And they will do everything within their power to stop any woman to sit at as the leader of Nigeria. They will do everything. And that is why Mazen Amdekano is asking the Nigerian Fulani government to allow Biafran referendum to happen so that Biafrans will choose whether they want to remain in the fraud called Nigeria, or they want to go and restore Biafra, where they will have total freedom. Mazen Amdokano saw all these things, and that was why he knew there was no hope for the zoo called Nigeria. Look at this example. Two men were governors one in Lagos and the other in Anambra. Towards the end of their second term, the one in Lagos 
sent his retirement bill and got his house of assembly to approve what you see or what I will mention as his yearly pension. 300% annual salary as severance package as approved by RMAFAC. That's the revenue body. 100% of annual basic salary of incumbent governor as salary for life, even after leaving office. Six new cars every three years. A new house in Lagos, minimum five bedroom. A new house in Abuja or any other location, minimum five bedroom. Free medical care for him and members of his family for life. Entitled to cook, steward, gardeners, and domestic staff, all pensionable, 300% of his annual basic salary as governor every two years as furniture allowance, 100% of annual basic salary as governor as his house maintenance allowance, two DSS officers, one female officer for his wife and eight policemen to guide him. 25% of his annual basic salary for personal assistance. 30% of his annual basic salary for car maintenance. 20% of his annual basic salary as utility maintenance. Pensionable drivers, no limit to numbers. My brothers and my sisters, this is apart from what he gets as percentage of collections from the firm Alpha Beta, which collect tax for Lagos State and total control he has over the governors and the treasury and one billion naira monthly he gets from the state government. But for P2B, he collects from Anambra, what, what he collects from Anambra since he left office as governor. No gratuity, no pension, no house, no car, no allowance, no any kind, no any maintenance of any kind, no personal assistance paid by the state, no domestic staff paid by the state, no aids sponsored by the state, not even pure water, no shishi from the state. My brothers and my sisters, this is what the zoo has become. And that is why Biafrans must be free. Thank you, my brothers and my sisters, for watching this video. And bye-bye for now.